Hi, everybody. Thanks for showing up. Uh, there are a lot more people in the room than we expected. Uh, we're, we're not only talking about uh, artificial intelligence uh, uh, today, but with a very specific part. So good to see you uh, turning up. Uh, oh, yeah, the clicker over here. Is it working? Yeah. So uh, the session is called Explainable AI Explained for Developers. Uh, but uh, first, let me introduce uh, us. Uh, my name is uh, Joop Snyder. I'm CTO at Agency. It's a uh, uh, consultancy comp agency specialized in artificial intelligence. I'm working for over a decade now in the field of artificial intelligence, and I'm especially interested in the explainable part of it. Willem? Yeah, so I'm uh, the chief AI architect for Agency. Uh, besides AI, I do some software engineering, but it's getting less and less uh, by the day, actually. Um, I, I do like to do a lot of volunteering, so I received a Microsoft MVP award in the uh, AI category for my open source work. Um, you may or may not have read a book from me about deep learning. Uh, I'm also pretty long in the field of AI, over 10 years now. Yeah, yeah thanks. Uh, now you know a little bit more about us, and I uh, want to uh, know a bit about you. Who of you uh, traveled from a foreign country here to the Netherlands? Ooh. Oh, wow, okay. Cool. And uh, who's Dutch? Okay, 50-50, nice, <laughs> nice. Uh, who consider himself or herself as a software engineer? And are there any data scientists or machine learning practices? Okay, two, three. Okay, nice, nice. What are the other people doing, actually? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, let's dive into the, uh, to the presentation of Explainable AI. Uh, but before we... Uh, well, I'll, let, let me uh, put it in another way. We, we have two parts of this presentation. The first part is about the why. Why do we need it? Uh, and the second part, we will tell you how do you uh, yeah, go along with this, uh, with this uh, technique. Uh, first of all, let's see why it's important from a business perspective. Uh, well, why do we need uh, explainable AI in the first place? And why do you need to know this as a software developer? Uh, there are a lot of software developers in the room, so why do you need this? Uh, I think that's because of a, a technique called uh, automated machine learning. And uh, with automated machine learning, it's nowadays easier than ever to build and train a machine learning model. So maybe you get a request uh, from uh, someone, your manager or someone else, say, hey, well, you're tech savvy, can you build me a machine learning model? Uh, and it's quite easy, you provide a data set with, uh, with labels uh, attached to it. Uh, you can put it in this uh, autom automated machine learning uh, uh, technique and it will build and train a machine learning model for you. Easy peasy. Uh, but uh, it's just one small part of the machine learning uh, process. Uh, you start with, uh, with getting some data, uh, you have to pre-process it, so uh, it's machine readable, but also you have to do something about data quality. Uh, and uh, then you build and train, and well, for, let's say, for the, for the simplicity, the last uh, step is to deploy the machine learning model. And automated machine learning is, is doing that part for you, the build and train part. The, the other uh, things you have still uh, do it yourself. Um, and to show you how easy it is, uh, we uh, made up uh, an, uh, a company called Tasty Beans. And with Tasty Beans, uh, people can subscribe uh, to yeah, get a, uh, what is it? Uh, Basically, you can get your monthly fix of coffee beans. Exactly that. Yeah. And, uh, well, William, can you tell us something more about Tasty Beans? Yeah. So, uh, it's, it's uh, a sort of a hobby of mine to build something cool and, and it gets out of hand qu pretty quickly. Uh, Tasty Beans is no, no different uh, in that sense. So um, I figured, how do you explain machine learning to people? Well, you can do that in theory. You can explain the math. Th that could work too. But I don't think that's the, the best way to explain it to developers. So I made an application, and it's not finished by any means because it's pretty big. Um, 
that basically allows you to subscribe to this company and they will send out a package of coffee beans every month to you. And the idea is you can rate the coffee that you receive and the next month we try to do better. That's basically the idea behind it. We have two shipping companies that ship out beans and one shipping company is really good and the other shipping company is less good. Let's put it that way. And we use modern techniques like containers and load balancers and that stuff. So there's a 50-50 division between the two shipping companies. So we might get lucky, we might get very unlucky with our customers. But we're trying things out to get uh, our subscription model going. And one of the, the things that we noticed in our makeup uh, uh, coffee bean company is that people are leaving us all of a sudden. It might be due to this thing with the shipping companies that work for us, but it could be something else. So what we're going to do is we're going to... Well, well maybe uh, let me introduce uh, myself uh, within this company. Yeah, that's uh, a good uh, point. Uh, company. Yeah. I'm, let's say I'm the business owner of this, uh, of this Tasty Beans uh, company. And what we see is that uh, more and more customers are canceling their subscription. So something is happening. Uh, but, but yeah, what is happening? Why are they leaving? And uh, well, Willem told just now he's quite tech savvy. Uh, so Willem, maybe you can build me a model uh, where, well, I get a list of people that are likely to cancel their subscription. Uh, I know machine learning is a thing, so please make me a make me a machine learning model, and let's say with an accuracy of 95 percent. Is that uh, something? Uh, uh, mm, 96, 97. Well, uh, we said ambition go ambitious goal. 98 percent, Willem. Okay, so 98 percent of the predictions have to be correct. Yeah. Okay, I think I can I can help you. Um, so. Um, uh, normally, I would do this in a slightly different way. I do Python, but today I'm going to show you automated machine learning because I think that's a pretty cool way to get started. Um, so what I can do is, in, in this case, I'm using Azure. If you're using AWS or Google, there's something in there as well for automated machine learning. I'm just not showing it today. Um, one of the things that I can do is I can say, well, I've got a data set. I collected some data from production. Um, I already called it customer churn, and what I've done is I've um, uh, I've actually selected a few features I think that are interesting to look at. So in this case, I think the product quality is important to people. So what I've done is I've collected the ratings from the last six months. That seems to be a good way of predicting whether somebody will like our service or not. The other thing that I know is we are testing two shipping companies at the moment. So delivery quality is the other thing that might be interesting to people. Uh, uh, if you don't receive your coffee, you're very likely to leave. I think that's the case. And then my last column is last month, who left and who didn't leave? So one, the person left and, and canceled their subscription. Zero, they, they remained a customer from us. So that's my data. I've collected around 20,000 rows, I think, 10,000 it says over here, so I think a pretty good size data set. Let's see. Um, I can select my data set and say, well, uh, I want to create a model for, it, for the data set. I'm configuring my environment to use a compute cluster in Azure, um, basically a bunch of virtual machines that are going to do all the training stuff for me. I can then pr press, uh, oh, I have to select a column, of course. So I want to predict the label, whether somebody is going to leave or not. Let's click next. Then what, it, what this tool allows me to do is say, what sort of model do you want to make? A classification model, it's either yes or no, red, blue, or green, or a regression model. It's 90% likely that someone is going to leave. Well, I don't think Joop is looking for that, so I'm going with a classification model today. I can click uh, next again, and I can say, I need some way of testing whether I've reached my goal of producing a, a correctly working model. Uh, I'm leaving this on automatic because I don't know really today what I want. So let's, let's do that and click finish. What it's going to do is it, it, it's going to schedule a job for me and it's going to build my model. This is where I'm done. This is all the coding that I need to do. There wasn't any coding actually. So what I've done of course is uh, this takes several hours. So right now I've, I've 
choosing the defaults for my machine learning, and it will take six hours. And what it's going to do is it's going to train a mountain of models, actually. It's going to try different things and then produce a model that's working. The good news is for Yope, I've, I've got a model that's 99% accurate. Oh, yeah. That's more than an hour score. Well, uh, nice. don't get your hopes up today. Um, it's my friendly warning. So automated, automated oh. machine learning in this case is, is trying different models. It's pretty stupid still. It's going to select one model from the list, a model type. It takes my data set, it trains a model, and it tests it. That produces an accuracy measure that, that tells me, oh, it's 76% accurate, or 99 in this case. And then it tries another one, and another one, and another one, until the, until the time is up. And then at the end, it says the, the one with the highest score, that's the one I want. And it's basically a black box. I don't know what sort of model it is. But Joop, you've got your model. Yeah, so you see it's pretty easy to uh, build a machine learning uh, model. Um, and that's why there's a promise that the, uh, what they say, well, the, the models that come out are production ready. Uh, we see we, we got some data. William pre-processed it already before he trained, built and trained it with auto ML. So now we can deploy it to production. Who thinks this model is production ready? Okay, nice. That's, uh, <laughs> that's the good answer. Uh, well, if we look at the high level requirements for uh, a machine learning model to put it, uh, to put it in production, at least uh, what you, uh, the, the requirements you, which you have to meet is it must be a, a robust model. Uh, it must be fair if it uh, has to do something with, with people. You want a fair uh, uh, outcome of the, of the machine learning model. Uh, obviously, it has to be secure. Uh, and today, we're focus, focusing on us on the transparent part of the, uh, the high-level requirement. So in the meantime, Willem uh, uh, built a uh, dashboard as well. Uh, out of the, uh, the outcomes of the machine learning model. And now we have a list of uh, a couple of customers that are on the verge of canceling the subscription, uh, quite a lot, uh, with a high accuracy, and a 99 point something, yeah. you said. Uh, uh, okay, now as a business owner, I have this, this list of people. Um, what do I do now? Which, which action will, will I take based on the outcome of this great model? Anyone? What, what, uh, what are you suggesting for me? Should I? Yeah? Sorry? Oh, discount. I, I, discount. OK, yeah. How the, high? The, the, do you have a percentage in mind? 50% off. OK. Wow. OK. Dude. Yeah? <laughs> If they are happy, oh yeah, they are asking the people. Yeah, okay, nice. Okay, so uh, now another one in the back. Yeah. Which feature was causing this, uh, yeah, this outcome? Yeah, because if we would consider now a discount or uh, something else, uh, that could hurt my business uh, without really knowing if it's going to benefit me. Uh, the only thing I have is a list of people. Um, and asking them, uh, maybe that won't help me as well, because people usually don't give uh, exact answers why they have a specific behavior. Um, so the features. Features is maybe, uh, I, we will go that, that road. Let's, uh, let's see. Um, because if you know the features that, that were impacting the, uh, the outcome of the model, uh, that's, that's one part of the explainable AI. Eh? It, it explains why a model has a certain outcome. And why is that important? First of all, to find errors within your machine learning model. As a data scientist or software developer, and there, there's something going on. Uh, you, you cannot debug the, uh, uh, the model. Uh, there's, no, there's no code. Yeah, there's code that says train. Train this, that's it. You can step over it, and then you have the model. 
Uh, the second part is um, for if, if it impacts people, uh, then there's a lot of regulations coming up from the EU, but also the current GDPR uh, demands some uh, uh, transparency as well for automated uh, decision making. Uh, but we're, we will focusing on the last part. Well, without the explanations, I don't know which action I, I can take uh, to, to make sure that the customers remain. So now we know the why, and uh, let's see uh, how we can do this. Let's take a look at yep. the explanations. So I've got a black box right now. That's yep. basically, and it only says yes or no. Let, let's see if we can find out what's on the inside of the model. Um, and there's actually two ways to do this. Uh, the most ideal way, if you ask me, is an interpretable model. That's basically a model that's, that's a sort of a glass box. I can look on the inside of the model and follow the structure from top to bottom and then end up with an answer. And that tells me exactly, hey, I have this input, oh, that means this decision, and it results in that outcome. And sometimes the, those models are, are typically a lot simpler. They don't have as many inner workings and a, not a lot of flexibility, so they might not work always. More complex models um, allow for solving more complex problems, basically. Uh, and an interpretive model is usually not, not suitable for, the, for things like computer vision or audio analysis. Th those kind of things is pretty hard. And sometimes I have an AI model that's already trained and then there's no going back. Uh, somebody else made it, maybe, or I made it using a non-transparent technique. In that case, I need explainable AI. So interpretable AI is be during training, I make a model that I can check afterwards. It's fully transparent. Explainable AI, I have a model, and I'm going to check the inner workings afterwards. So I'm going to manipulate the data and the environment of the model, and that will give me a sense of what's going on on the inside. It's not literally what I see on the inside, but it's sort of an idea of the inside. So that's what I'm going to do today, because um, when you look at this, for example, one of the types of machine learning models that you can create is a decision tree. That's an interpretable model. Why? You can see it on my slide. You can follow it top to bottom. That works. But I don't have that in this case. I've got something else in my machine learning environment that's not interpretable. So we have to explain it. And one of the ways you can explain a model is by looking at feature importance. Which of the inputs is the most important for my model? So in this case, I can, when I'm looking at this chart, I can see that there's one feature Delivery number six, the last delivery that the person received, has a high impact on the decision whether somebody's going to leave or not. This is a very useful way of explaining models. The way this works is actually we take the data, we train the model the first time, and then what we do is we take one feature and we flip the feature, we randomize it, and then we train the model again, and we calculate the same metric, accuracy, but this time we're going to look at the difference between the two versions of the model. And that tells me how important is this feature actually. Because if you shuffle a feature, the outcome will be different. And if it's suddenly very bad, you know that's a very important feature. And we repeat this process for every feature. So this is what you, you're looking at actually. Uh, uh, Willem, uh, for me as a business owner, you, you, tell, you told me something about the, that interpretable part, mm -hmm. uh, this one uh, or this one. I, is it possible? for within AutoML to force it to use only interpretable uh, algorithms? If you know which models are interpretable, yes, you can force it in that direction. Okay. But it's, it's limited in that sense. You might get unlucky and doesn't produce any usable model. And you have to know which model is, is, is interpretable. So you have to be a data scientist and, and know, know your stuff, basically. Um, so if you're starting out, it might not be that easy. Okay, C uh, can you make the model more explainable uh, for me? Yeah, sure. Um, um, let, let's build another dashboard and show you the top three reasons why people are leaving. I think that's the most useful one. Um, so this is the, uh, the dashboard that I came up with, um, and it shows you all the reasons why people are leaving. Is that helpful? Does that add anything to you? Uh, well, maybe. I, I have to think about that. Maybe you can show how you uh, got this result. Sure. Yeah, I can. Okay. Uh, then I can then actually. Uh, let's think about uh, what. Uh, yeah. Let's what it says. Um, 
the normally explainable AI is a pretty advanced technique. It's not something that, that people are using today a lot, but um, not to worry. What I can do in automated machine learning, I can say view explanation. Microsoft was kind enough for me to actually generate an explanation for my model automatically. And it does so for the best model, so this is what you get from Microsoft. This is the feature importance that they use. Uh, it's all in there, so you still don't have to program anything. Nice. And there's obviously a lot of options. I'm not going to show that today. Um, but if you're interested, you can, you can certainly talk to me after the session and I can show you more. But this is sort of, this is the way I, I extracted this information from the model um, and, and I turned it into uh, a useful dashboard for, I, I mean, I, we can't leave these people waiting for. Yeah, okay. Uh, so apparently there are all kinds of reasons why someone is leaving. Uh, I recognize Alicia. Alicia was one of our first uh, uh, subscribers. So, uh, well, I'm a bit sad she's on the on the list. Uh, anyone maybe help can help me out. What my what my action can be based on this uh, on this explanation? You couldn't. No. Sorry. The shipping the company. Okay. Yeah. A ship. Okay. And based on? Okay. I see a lot of ratings as well. Uh, and, and there are still 13,300 customers likely to churn. Well, maybe. Sorry, I can't change okay. that. Yeah. Well, at, at least we know a little bit more, but in this case, in, uh, maybe it's better uh, to know if there are different kind of customers with uh, where we can maybe more cluster uh, the outcomes and the explanations and see if there is any relationship between them uh, so we can make a, a more uh, yeah, data-driven uh, yeah, decision, uh, yeah. data-driven based decision of what we, do, what we should do next. Uh, get another shipping company or uh, uh, giving people discounts or uh, anything else. Uh, but before that, uh, we have to take it just a little uh, bit deeper into the stuff. Maybe you can tell something about global, uh, local and global uh, explanations. Uh, yeah, so, so we've actually explored two types of explanations in this case. So initially, when I gave you up the list of people and reasons why they are, are leaving, that's a local explanation. For each prediction, I'm explaining why that particular prediction was given to you. That's a local explanation. It provides a very high level of detail. This is useful in cases where, for example, you have to score a credit application and, pe and people get denied and they ask, why is my credit application denied? Well, you can explain that using a local explanation. It doesn't give you the overall picture, of course. And that's, that's a challenge. So this is where global explanations come in. The feature importance chart that you just saw, that was a global explanation. It only tells me from a helicopter view, oh, this is the most important feature in your data set on which I'm basing my decision. But there's something we have to do in between because the local explanation clearly didn't help you. Nope. And the global explanation didn't help either. So we have to do something in between here. Yeah, and maybe you, you find this uh, uh, conversation between uh, Willem and me uh, a bit uh, funny or silly, uh, but it, it was a, a real life scenario at a Dutch uh, health insurance uh, company uh, where we came in. They had an initial uh, machine learning model which didn't perform that well. And uh, the first question was, well, can you make the model a bit more accurate? So they raised they raised the bar, it got a lot more accurate, uh, and then they got a, a huge list of people who, are, uh, who, who would uh, likely to churn. And they tried uh, to call several of the customers, and they got all kinds of uh, answers why they were, would leave, but also uh, after 50 calls, they said, well, this, is, this isn't scalable. And uh, then they ask for the explanations. Uh, you get individual explanations. Based on the individual explanations, it's 
uh, well, it's hard, as, as you can see, as well, to do anything else. Um, so what they, what they said, well, we have to segment our customers. They were lucky that they had known customer segments, uh, but with the Tasty Beans uh, analogy, we can uh, see if there uh, is a difference between uh, people who are early adopters of, the, uh, of our product, or maybe we can divide it by region or country or uh, you know, whatever. And then we can make some global explanations specific for that segment. And within that segment, then I can see what the reason is for that segment uh, why people are leaving. And in the insurance company, what they did is for a, a specific segment, they could say, hey, well, we have to uh, turn up our marketing uh, activity. Uh, for others, it, it meant a, a different uh, uh, proposition they, they had to make or change the, uh, uh, how do we say that, the options uh, in their tenure, uh, for example. But they could target a specific group instead of individuals or see the uh, population as a whole. So that's why uh, explanations are yeah, so important and that you have to uh, think about what you want to achieve with it. Um, but there's no, there's no one size fits all. Huh? We, we showed not. you one uh, technique, the feature importance plot. And uh, what we can show you as well, there are a, a couple of more techniques. Uh, it doesn't cover it all, but the, the, the data we use here is tabular data, and a feature importance plot with the models we used uh, is a great way uh, uh, to start, but uh, maybe, uh, uh, Willem, you can... Uh, uh I can very quickly uh, talk through this yeah. part. Yeah. So there, there are other ways to explain this. We have several levels of explanation, local, global, and something in between, if you want. Um, but you can also look at particular features and values within features. When does, does the model change, depending on the value that you uh, put in? So that's a feature profile. That's one way of doing it. Um, another cool question that you can ask is, can you break down this prediction, starting with feature number one, and then moving with the model as it decides between one and zero, basically. One being uh, uh, leaving, uh, zero uh, remaining. Uh, that, that's also a very useful technique to debug predictions, actually. Uh, can, can you go back? But because it's uh, the, the green bars. Uh, is in a positive is a direction po towards one. So in this case, that, that's likely to leave. It yep. increases the odds that someone is going to leave. And red is it decreases the odds that somebody so it, is going so to leave. So you can really sum everything up, and yeah. uh, at the bottom you can see uh, what the prediction is. Yeah, okay. yeah, you can check that, and that, that will give you a definitive answer. If there's anything funny in this chart that doesn't, I mean, you can apply your basic knowledge of the data to this, and then decide, is this useful or not? Oh, I have a measurement error or something that causes this problem. Uh, that, that's a very useful way of uh, looking at this. Um, so th that's, th that's sort of, of the tools that, that I use on a daily basis. Um, but the explanation could vary based on the data type that you have. We have tabular data with numbers. That, that works. But what if you have text? Well, you could use another explanation that highlights the words that influence the decision between, in this case, is uh, someone an atheist or a Christian. Um, that's one of the samples from um, uh, Lime, uh, one of the tools that provides explanations in AI. Um, that could be useful, um, but what if you have images? Clearly, the other explanations don't work anymore, so you need yet another way of explaining uh, uh, what's going on. In this case, we have to decide between dog and cat. Uh, clearly, the model decided that it's a dog, and it does so based on the highlighted area in the image. It's by no means perfect. That's one thing that you have to keep in mind. Explainable AI is yet another machine learning model on top of your machine learning model. So it's uncertainty on top of uncertainty. But if you do your human checks, so you ask an expert to look at the explanation and the outcome of the model, then you should get a pretty good idea of what's going on. A lot better than doing nothing, at least. Uh, that's, that's important. 
Um, and then there's this one is, is also pretty cool. So um, basically, so th the previous one was just explaining, oh, this area is important. But what if we could ask the computer, okay, you predicted this is a pelican, but why? Well, because of the structure of the beak, because of the texture on the feathers, because of the color. It then highlights certain properties. So this is no longer an explainable model, but an interpretable version of a computer, a computer vision model. This is a, a, a development that's been going on in the last two years, so it's pretty new, but it, it looks very, very promising, this uh, area of expertise. Yeah, so uh, there, there are a lot of uh, ways to explain machine learning models, even if they are black box models. Uh, Willem uh, trained the black box model. Uh, and our main takeaway for today is that uh, yeah, if, you if you need a production-ready machine learning model, it must at least be fair, robust, secure, and I hope you take in mind the transparency. Well, thank you all. And uh, if you want to keep in touch with us, uh, please uh, connect uh, on, uh, on LinkedIn. Uh, Willem open sourced his ta Tasty Beans application so you can uh, do all the things uh, he showed you uh, today and even more. Uh, we're from agency and we uh, hope that we uh, yeah, get some feedback from you. And if you have some questions, please let us, uh, let us know. Thank you.